So I'm one of the rare ones who actually uses Bitwig Studio as my main DAW, as my workhorse that I do all my work on. Bitwig just announced Bitwig version four, which looks like a huge upgrade over the previous versions. And this is for three main reasons that I'm gonna discuss in today's video. First is the Apple Silicon support. This is actually something that Bitwig has surpassed all the other DAWs on, even Apple's own logic, I would say. Second is audio comping, and this is something that I'll probably enjoy the most, and most users. It'll have a huge improvement on your speed, working with vocals especially. Third is the MIDI operators function. This is something that I hadn't really thought of too much, but now that I use it more and more, I'm actually really appreciating it and thinking that it'll help my workflow a ton. All right, let's head into the studio and discuss these three new upgrades. The feature that I want to start out with talking about is the most important for a lot of Apple users who have newer Apple products, and that is the Apple Silicon support. If you're using Apple Silicon, you'll see a DAW that's over twice as fast, just way more responsive. Everything that you're doing will be way snappier. Uh, this is a huge improvement and reason to upgrade alone. First, we'll just open up the previous version of Bitwig and see how long it takes. This is on a new computer here too. Okay. 28 seconds about. Now let's open up the new version, about 10 seconds, maybe even under 10 seconds. But we're talking a three times improvement in the startup speed of the application. But just working within the DAW, you'll notice the native plugins open up a lot faster. When you're bouncing out audio, it's a lot faster. The main thing I wanna talk about though, in terms of the Apple Silicon compatibility and support is Bitwig is built around a different architecture for most DAWs. What it actually does is it handles the main DAW separately from all your plugins. They actually handle plugins differently from most other DAWs. Plugins have always been handled outside of the DAW. So this means that they can actually run on the Intel emulator of your Apple Silicon computer, while Bitwig itself can run natively. This is something that Ableton doesn't do. Most of the DAWs, even Logic, Apple's own DAW, doesn't do this. So you actually have to run Logic on Rosetta so that you can make sure all your plugins work and so you're not getting the full compatibility and speed out of Logic. But now with Bitwig, you can get that full speed of Apple Silicon while still emulating your plugins. So they might be a little bit slower if they're third party plugins. You know, this has always been a benefit of Bitwig because when plugins crash, they just crash individually and your project still stays running and you can just relaunch each plugin. Let's talk about comping, which is the feature I'm by far the most excited about in the new Bitwig 4. Uh, this is something that I saw in Ableton 11 and I've just been itching to be able to use it. So I'm glad that it's now coming to the Bitwig Bitwig world. This is going to be huge. If we can become fluent in using it, it's just going to increase the efficiency of working with tons of vocal takes or guitar takes, whatever it is. Mixing will be way easier. So what is it? So basically if you have a bunch of different takes or different tracks of the same line, you can basically merge it all into one clip um, by just selecting different regions of the different takes. So let's take a look here at what I have. So I've got this vocal here for one of my upcoming songs. And I mean, I just selected at random different pieces here, but these three takes right here are being merged together into this one master take, which then is what we're hearing. All I have to do is just select the different regions in here, the different takes and then it just chooses. And you can do it at random pretty much and it fades decently well. I'm not hearing I'm any clicks. I don't must leave you. you know, there's different things you can do within here. So if you look down at the bottom of this screen here, it shows you different things that you can do with each take. So if you just click on one of the selected regions, then it'll just take that uh, take. You can also click and drag to have whatever specific part of the take you want. Um, and then you can also press Alt and drag a clip and it'll actually move the audio within that track. And then another thing you can do is press Alt and Shift and drag and it'll drag all of the clips. Oh, 
I'm begging, 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 and it'll select the whole region. You can start from scratch again. Yeah, so how do we get into this view in the first place? Well, there's a couple different ways. If you already have your vocal takes um, recorded, like I do here, so I have these three different takes. And uh, what I can do then is I'll have to merge these all into one clip. Um, so there's probably an easier way to do this, but this is just how I found out so far. So if I just select this region, pull it up here, select this region, pull it up here. So I just, I wanna create one track and then um, within that one track you, so if you have one track with multiple takes, you can right click it and then you can select full to takes. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is choose three takes and then the resulting Take length is two bars for each of those. Click OK. And now click it and within it, I can see the three different takes I have here that I can then choose with comping. So the other way to do this is if you don't already have the vocal takes and you're recording live, um, you'll click this button up here. And then uh, when you record, you loop a certain section, just have a couple bars or four bars, whichever take you're, you're doing and have that looped click this button and then record into that track. And then each time it records over, it'll add that as a layer in your vocal comping. And you can go into this view and edit the different vocal comps. So I'm super excited about this feature. Uh, the main downside is there isn't MIDI comping. So you can't do this in the MIDI world yet, which I believe you can do that in Ableton 11. But this is, this is the main reason I would use it is doing vocals. You know, you can also bounce out different MIDI tracks and do it that way. So Bitwig just leveled up big time with this new comping feature. And now the feature that I don't know how much I'll use, but maybe I will. And it's kind of exciting in its own way because it enables you to have a different workflow. And this is the new operators feature. What you're essentially able to do is have a different workflow when you're working in the MIDI world. What you can do is have just really short repeating bars, say like a two bar loop that repeats four times but each time it'll be slightly different. So instead of having to program out the entire eight bars, you can just program two bars of it, but have all the information in those two bars to complete the entire eight bar loop. This is something that I think I'll have to work on to get fluent with it. But once I do, it could speed up my workflow quite a bit. And then the other benefit is you can make stuff feel more human. So you can add probability, chance of certain notes being played, and then also um, variation in the velocity or the panning or whatever of certain notes um, so that you don't actually program all of those things but you have the computer kind of randomizing and adding almost a human feel to the notes that are being played. Let's take a look at this little demo song that I made for this. So if you take a look at the MIDI that I've been creating here you'll see it looks a little bit different than normal. Um, we've got these different symbols here. I've been messing around. You can see what this is, is a probability. If you look over here on the left side, you'll see there's a 78% chance that that note will be played. 91, 91. So you just select the different MIDI and you can change the likelihood of it being played. But what else can you do? Well, you'll see I have this note here, which is kind of divided up into other notes. What I've done is I've gone here below the probability and I've selected six times. So this note is actually being played six times in a row, not just once. And then you can adjust the spread of it. So whether it's an even six times or whether it's more at the front and less at the back. This will be a great way to make trap hats, of course. You would think you could just, you know, create all the individual notes but this allows you to quickly change how many notes you have you can then actually go into the velocity here and you can adjust um, the velocity to be going up and down. You know, you can create a lot of different variants within just one MIDI note. Now, the other thing you'll see is I have some little bars here at the end of the note, and that is this feature here 
which is basically an if conditional. As you're looping each time through, you can have different stuff happen. So like the first time that this two bar loop is played through, um, you can play this note. But then the second time through, you'll notice it didn't play it. You know, this gives you greater flexibility. Each time the loop is played through, you're having changes within the track. And then the other thing you can do is you see these notes up here, they're not being played, but that's because I haven't selected this button here, which then plays those crazy notes. <laughs> and that's the if on fill button. So you just select the notes and then on fill, or you could do off fill. But if I am doing on fill and I have this button selected, then um, those notes will play. And finally, you can select Alt. You can hold Alt while you select your velocity or you know whichever things you have down here. And then there's a range of probability that those different velocities will be changed. So instead of having to change individually all these velocities, I can just select them all, hold Alt, you know, go like that. And then there's a lot of different velocities. The beta for Bitwig is available now. The official Bitwig 4 release is going to happen at the end of Q2 or early Q3, which basically means probably June, July. Just be careful when using the beta. I haven't had too many issues so far. A couple plugins have been a little bit weird. I would highly recommend Bitwig. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really love the small team that they have and then the small fan community, but the fact that it's a feature packed software that is actually ahead of the game in some aspects, although it still needs work in other ways. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I have lots more coming, including a new release. Um, stay tuned for that. Bye.